Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, I want to talk about sharks. We need to talk about sharks. Uh, we got a new course that announced last night. It's called Rage of the Abyss. Uh, I think it sounds like it could be a spiritual successor to Abyss Rising from 2012, which had uh, shark support as the cover. I could easily see them doing that here. They've kind of given things to sharks for like the last couple years, uh, but it honestly hasn't culminated in that great of a deck. There's some pieces there, and I really like some of the stuff they have, but it's just not all the way there. And maybe this is the, the push that they need to get them out there uh, in full force and finally come out as like a high-level rogue deck other than like a fringe rogue deck where very specific players only do okay with it. So um, we're going to talk about what sharks have access to at the moment. Uh, this is all theory at this point. We don't know for sure if it's going to be shark support, but a lot of people think it should be uh, Zexel. Uh, based the the next core set that fits with sharks the name fits with sharks same name as the core set 12 years ago that had sharks in the cover it just all signs are really pointing to sharks right now so let's talk about them let's see what they got and let's talk about what i want to see for them if they end up in here and assume they're going to get somewhere between six and ten cards uh brand new to them all right so let's get into it. Let's start off with the, the main deck stuff that I think is, you know, probably most important. Your main deck matters more than your extra because your main deck gets you to your extra. So it's, it's the first it's the first step there in the process. So first, let's talk about normal summons. They have a handful of actually decent normal summons. The main one is Buzzsaw. This just summons another fish out of the deck based on the level of a monster you target on your field. So normally he's a four, summoning another four. Uh, good card. I mean, long story short, good card. I mean... It's pretty good normal, gets you pretty good value uh, just by itself. Then you have Butuniful Princess. This card is very similar, gets you the same outcome as Buzzsaw basically, but it's way weaker to Ash, right? Because it banishes itself as cost uh, when it's summoned to go ahead and summon a level 4 lower fish from deck. Life of the Leaf Fish, I like this card a lot. We just don't have the best tools to utilize it. Uh, it foolishes any fish monster, so it's like an Armageddon Knight for fishes. And it has a bonus effect where in grave you can banish it to target three fishes in grave, shuffle them back into the deck to draw one card. The problem is we don't even have enough good fish monsters in our engine to consistently put three other fishes in, in grave aside from this card, let alone fishes we actually are okay with and or even want to shuffle back. Uh, and so that's definitely something where I could see Konami making this card just way better. And even a world where, like, maybe consistently, like, our, our basic turn one play is consistently just putting this in grave, whether you're, able, you're even able to use the Foolish Burial or not uh, effect, you're just actually getting a draw every turn as well. So just even more value on top of what you already do. That'd be really, really cool. But I like this card quite a bit. It just it doesn't have the tools yet. Uh, Mermaid Shark, this is another one that really hasn't seen too much play, but it, you read it and you're like, it's not a bad card, right? On normal, just search any level 3, 4, 5 fish. Cool. I, I just don't think, I think the problem with it is it's not level 4 uh, or 5, basically. So no matter what you search, this card is not contributing to the type of Exceed monster you would want to so if this card does get negated even and you have extenders uh, like a level four extender you'd want this to be a force you could at least get into a rank four play but that doesn't do it so that's probably why it hadn't seen play but I, I still read and i go there's a world where maybe they just do something dumb and make this card like crazy i guess but it'd be a very specific card then you get to the extenders abyss shark this to me is the cream of the crop of the extenders kind of like how buzzsaw is the cream of the crop for the uh for the normal summons um, this card's good, right? If you have a water on field, you can special this and add a level 3, 4, or 5 fish from deck to hand. So it's like Mermaid Shark, but like an extender that doesn't take your normal and really powerful. Uh, this card's good. I mean, no complaints on this card other than the fact that it can only... It can be treated as a level 3 or 4 monster, but only if you overlay it for a number monster. Such a bummer. So you can't make Bahamut with this, but you can still make stuff like Kragan uh, and some other specific uh, Exceeds as well, but... Uh, still a good card in a vacuum, just a good extender. It's just a plus one. That's what I think the biggest thing for me is, is the main deck for, for fish or for sharks in general is so many like mid extenders. Uh, Crystal Sharks, another cool card they have. Uh, I like this card as a, as a grindy card because uh, it can summon itself from hand or grave uh, every turn basically. So kind of like a salad type card. You just keep putting this card in grave and it just keeps coming back every turn. So it's pretty cool. I like this card. Uh, and Silent Angler. This is the perfect personification of basically all the types of extenders you end up playing in Sharks in a bunch of different ways. You could play fusion packages with like ready fusion summoning a vanilla from extra, but then you lose extra space and all that. 
Um, there's stuff like uh, the tenyi, the water tenyi, but it's not a fish. So again, like that clunks up stuff like lifeless leaf fish, keeping it from being able to resolve in, in a lot of scenarios, uh, as well as like silent sea nettles, which is just like an aqua extender. Like you just, they're just weird. And even this one, even though it's a fish and you're like, it's okay. All it says is jump on the field. This is a water the fish that just jumps on the field. And it's just a one for one extender. And that is it. It just feels so under powder, underpowered in today's current like format. I mean, format, metagame, whatever you want to call it. Like, just look at any deck that's decent. Like, look at the top 20 decks. I don't think they have a card in their engine that's as bad as this card. <laughs> like, they could be a brick, but at least they're a crucial engine piece. This card as an extender is just so mid, it's crazy. So, I just think that the archetype would really be, would really love to see one or two more cards closer to like Abyss Shark. It's just like a plus one extender. It's just worth more. Jumps on the field, maybe has a graveyard effect. Jumps on the field, foolish burial something. Jumps on the field, adds something. Jumps on the field, draws a card. Whatever it is, I don't care. It just feels like this deck falls behind because it has just so many fair cards in it, especially the extenders. And I think those could use the biggest upgrade over anything. Uh, then there's like XYZ Remora. This is just basically an engine requirement. It's just too good. When this card pops off, it means you're like making like three or four rank fours basically in the same turn. It's pretty strong. It's pretty scary when you're for your opponent when you resolve this, but. Uh, I'd like to just play one. So you don't really want to draw this card. You want to search it when you want it. Uh, okay, and then the Armored Exceed package. We can throw this in there. This is a pretty important piece of the of the puzzle here. Um, one of the biggest weaknesses of this deck is that like it just didn't get you much after interaction. And so now, even if you just even if it, you do something as simple as like make Bahamut a Bahamut effect, it gets impermed. You can just overlay for for you know the uh, the full armor cards and just search full armored Exceed. Boom. You've got an interruption built into a non-targetable big body boss monster, and like that can just win you a duel sometimes, right? Especially through a hand trap. So your opponent's gone neg one, you still got an interruption and a boss monster out of it. You could still have non-engine hand traps in your hand. That can get the job done, for sure. So um, I think this package is really nice for the deck. Yes, it adds some bricks, but like the deck didn't generally play too many bricks, so it's not the end of the world, especially if it helps your deck one raise their ceiling as well as raise their ability to play through interaction as well and then you get to the extra deck this is probably the, the area i feel the strongest about at this point in time and you just have strong you just have potent cards here like bahamut shark being able to just pump out totally awesomes is huge especially with the full armor package now because like before you're basically the only thing you can do with the bahamuts after you use them for toads was like maybe if you got two of them out go into the utopia f0 uh, but now, even if you just get to one, one, just making a rank four with waters gets you a totally awesome plus the uh, the full armor setup, which is pretty solid. You know, just for making one rank four, if you get hand trapped once, you still get to the full armor thing. I think there's pretty good, like, punch there for sure, especially if you raise the overall potency of some of those main deck cards. Uh, Toad, uh, Stealth Kragen, another really useful tool. I, what I really like about him is I appreciate how he differentiates himself from the other interactions you have access to, right? The deck can make Dweller for a Floodgate from the graveyard. The deck can make Negates in Toads and F-Zeros and stuff. But you also have access to removal with the Armored Exceed package and the Stealth Kragen. So you kind of can, can vary your interruptions, especially once you see certain matchups and, and hit them right where they don't want to be hit, which is pretty solid. Uh, and then, of course, the full armor cards, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting the main stuff here. There's a lot of, like, random little extenders and extra cards you could play, but these are the big ones that to generally get my point across on where sharks are at the moment. For me, I think the extra is solid, but we know fully they need a boss. They're going to get a boss monster. If, it's, if they get cover art territory, they're going to get a, an Exceed monster. I don't really care what it is. I don't even think they need much. They could technically just make something crazy and... Cool. I just hope it's playable and it's good and it's not just like a big boss monster that stinks and we just move forward with the same stuff we've been playing. But I think the main deck needs the most help, for sure. The engine's just not there. I love Buzzsaw. I like Life is the Fish, but it doesn't have the best targets to send. Uh, because really the, the main targets it can only really send right now is like uh, Crystal Shark. And because Crystal Shark can't be used for a fish rank for or a non-number, you can't even make Bahamut with it. So you have it's basically a one-card Kragan. But that's pretty much it. Uh, so it's a little pigeonholed, there, and and then Abyss Shark. Like those are the only three monsters I specifically like in the main deck for sharks right now. Uh, so I would love to see just added stuff. 
add, just give them a little more potency, two to three more main deck monsters, uh, specifically at least one more extender. Uh, maybe two more extenders would be really nice. Um, even if one's like, it doesn't have to always be a super plus one, but like if one's an extender, and then maybe it's like, maybe a little bit of the um, the princess from Rika type thing, where in grave, like you, you use it to make an exceed, it's a, it's a good extender, and then when you detach it, it's an extra interruption from grave. It's extra value in grave, whatever. That could be it. That could be the difference. Um, stuff like that would be really cool. Two to three monsters like that. I think another thing that's kind of awkward in the deck is they have, like, no searchability for, like, their starters, right? Because there's a lot of archetypes out there that just have shark, wind-up shark, and there's other ones I don't know them all off the top of my head, but... So I think Konami's, like, that's a little bit too generic of a term to just make a, a rota for shark cards. Is there a way for them to just make it, like, water, fish you know, level three, four, five water fish searcher, but then like maybe it hard locks you into water for the whole turn. Is there a world where they do something like that? I'd like to see something like that. I know it's generic and we don't really want more generic searchers, especially after adding, adding bonfire to the uh, to the game, but that would really go a long way in helping this deck in my opinion, uh, because then it also, also give you the versatility and consistency, because you have to play like jank extenders in this deck all the time because even if you're like, I'm not going to see a good starter, but at least if I see two jank water extenders, I can at least just make a Bahamut. But you're using two cards to do it, you're still getting hit by one hand trap there and using two two cards, and, and it's just not a favorable trade in that scenario. So just better consistency, uh, improved extenders, and maybe even starters. Like maybe there's a world where they do something crazy there. Maybe a spell that tutors out Buzzsaw before, so you only have the normal Buzzsaw would be crazy. Um, the main deck needs help though, for sure. That's where the deck lags behind, in my opinion. I think they have some really powerful tools. We saw that. It topped the YCS, but I think that was more uh, fluke than a consistent result you can expect from the deck. So, yeah. That's what I, that's that's where I'm at. More main deck stuff. Just make the deck better in the main deck is where I, I land overall on this deck. But, yeah. Uh, those are my thoughts here. Guys, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm no, uh, you know, shark savant, but I have messed with the deck actually... Uh, within the last couple months i thought it was cool but uh not super consistent felt like you drew some hands where you couldn't really beat interaction all that easily uh fairly often and uh, that i think gets covered up with the stuff we talked about here so um, let me know your thoughts if you know more about the deck than me if you actually play the deck regularly i'd love to hear your thoughts on it if you're if you're one of those players uh definitely getting more in-depth insight would be really cool so throw that down in the comments below but I'm out of here for tonight. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Um, news should be coming this week, so if you want to stay updated on all things Yu-Gi-Oh! news and what's dropping, subscribe to the channel on that, as well as more discussions like this one. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.